All right, Shalom. First and foremost, before I begin, I want to start off by giving all praise to our power. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this word in the Ruel. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect scattered throughout the four winds of the earth that are in the hopes of receiving salvation during the time of Jacob Strobel. All right. Now what you just heard me say in the beginning of this video, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, are the true names of the Heavenly Father and of His beloved Son in the Paleo-Hebrew, okay? And according to prophecy, the Heavenly Father stated that in the latter days, He would bring back unto the nation of Israel, all right, consisting of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, the true descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a pure language, we would be calling upon the name of the Heavenly Father in one consent, Okay. And that prophecy has finally taken effect in this generation that we're living in, where the Heavenly Father has finally stirred up the pure minds of the nation of Israel back to the way of remembrance, okay? The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, who you see in front of you, who the world ignorantly calls God or Jehovah. The name Yahweh means He is or He to be. Bahashem, Ba means in, Ha means the, and Shem means name, in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai, who you see in front of you, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ or Yeshua. All right, the name Yahweh Shai means he delivers or the deliverer. Bahashim in the name Racha means spirit and Kodash means holy. And this video is brought to you through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to continue to prophesy into our nation of the things that are coming down the pipe and to further, you know, make points that accompany salvation to further build up the tabernacle of David. And pretty much the premise of this video is going to be centered around the lines of the only God speaking at this present time is the one you find within the Bible, okay? Because as we measure the time diligently in itself and we look at what's happening within these current events, um, the first point that comes to mind is this whole, you know, council, all right, that these brick nations are coming together of creating a new currency that's going to surpass the dollar. No other, you know, piece of ancient text is speaking about these certain situations but the scriptures man okay the talmud uh what else the the book of the dead the book of mormons all right the quran all these other philosophies and you know different traditions that are people accustomed to like christianity catholicism all this bullshit man all right is not speaking about what's happening right now but the Bible, okay? The God of the Bible has put everything that is going to happen in the future in the text, man. Okay? Which shows you the, the omnipotence of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? So, Lord's will, this video is edifying to you, brothers and sisters. I just wanted to make, um, make light upon this point because very soon, all right, we're going to see a lot of these traditions of men that our people follow after and that are so zealous for, we're going to see them put that to the trash, man. You know, just like you take a piece of paper and crumble it up and throw it into the trash. That's what we're going to start seeing very soon as we see these prophecies popping off the pages, man. Okay? As we see people catching hell with this famine that's going to take place, as we see this next lockdown, uh, you know, Abaratiza take place these upcoming months, a lot of people are going to come to the understanding that their gods are nothing but BS, man. Okay? So the first scripture that I want to grab is in the book of um, Isaiah. Chapter... Matter of fact, let me grab it in the blue letter. Isaiah 41 and 21. <clears throat> all right, and now as you read the scripture, all right, the Heavenly Father is having a dialogue you know, through the inspiration that he gave to Isaiah with these other idols, man. Okay? This is Isaiah chapter 41 and 21. Slaki. It says, Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. All right? Verse 22. Let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things what they be, that we may that we may be. I'm sorry. 
that we may consider them and know the latter end of them or declare us things for to come. Okay. Now reading in the NLT, it says, let them try to tell us what happened long ago so that we may consider the evidence. Okay. Or let them tell us what the future holds. And you have certain, uh, you know, ancient texts that speaks about what happened in the past. All right. Certain books that speak about the account of, you know, the flood and whatnot. But at the end of the day, the Bible has all that in store, man. Okay. It says, or let them tell us what the future holds. And once again, man, no other book is speaking about the MLTB. All right. World War Three. And what is going to be the end all be all of these certain situations, man. Okay. The only, once again, like I said, the only ancient text that is speaking loud and clear are the scriptures of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. It says, or let them tell us what the future holds so we can know what's going to happen. And a lot of these philosophies, man, they don't do nothing but, you know, itch that itch in the ears of our people. Okay. Talking to them about smooth things, you know, like it tells in the book of Isaiah, the um, matter of fact, let me grab that in the book of Isaiah 30 and 10. It says, matter of fact, let me start at, I'll start at eight. It says, now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. All right. And that time is now. All right, the scriptures is, uh, you know, for the lack of a better term, evidence to show that our people are nothing but rebellious, okay? Rebellious in nature and doing nothing but worshiping these other gods, man, okay? That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of Yahweh, okay? Which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not. Unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits, okay? And this is what our people, you know, get as they follow these different religions that don't deal with the volume of the book, man, okay? Verse 11, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to seize from before us, okay? And this is the condition of our people today, man, all right? following other religions just to get some kind of praise amen all right to get some type of status in society a lot of that is gonna all of that okay let me say it like that all of that is gonna lead them to the detriment man okay because it's not getting them ready for what's coming down the pipe okay and just like the beloved uh apostle gabar had made a video yesterday during the sabbath that very soon we're going to be looked as martyrs as we deal with the word of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? And a lot of these, you know, Israelites that know they're Israelites are not preparing their congregation for that, man. Which means what? That they're not dealing with the volume of the book. Okay? Because as you read within the lines of what these other Israelites are teaching, like, you know, just throwing out a couple names, IUIC, HOI. They're not speaking about what's happening in society, man. Okay? So that's going to lead a lot of our people into that pit that they're leading the rest of their congregation into. <clears throat> and with that in mind, man, it should, you know, if you have the understanding of what's happening in society and the Heavenly Father is supping with you via his prophets, count yourself blessed, man. Okay? Like the beloved elder Barak Allah out here in California loves to say, uh, count your blessings, okay? Because the Heavenly Father could have put a fat, strong delusion upon you to believe in, you know, something crazy, man, okay? And just like uh, yesterday, the beloved uh, Apostle Racha had made a video with the beloved elder Damashapa over there in Neapolis. The Heavenly Father could have put that most spirit upon you, man. Okay? So if you understand these scriptures and are in the know of what's going to happen very soon, count yourself blessed, man. 
Okay, because the wisdom of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is far more valuable than anything else that this world has to offer. Okay, telling us the things that happened before time. Matter of fact, real quick, um, let me grab that man in the book of Wisdom of Solomon 7. And starting at 17, it says, For he, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and 17, for he has given me certain knowledge of the things that are, namely, to know how the world was made and the operation of the elements, okay? And once again, no other philosophy and wisdom gives you the understanding of all things but Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai's wisdom, man, okay? Verse 18, the beginning, ending, and midst of the times, the alterations of the turning of the sun and the change of seasons, okay? The point that I want is in the very first, you know, line of the 18th verse. It says the beginning, ending, and midst of the times, man. Okay? Like I made the point um, regarding the BRICS nations, man. No other kind of text references what that whole situation is but the Bible, man. Okay? When you read Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, it puts it plain upon table let me grab it, man, real quick, just to, you know, for the sake of edification to show that there is no God beside Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. This is Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 1. It says, And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog. Okay? And the land of Magog is referring to Russia. It says the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him. Now, real quick, I had a, a image yep, right here where it shows you that a lot of people are in the know of these prophecies, man. Okay. This image shows you an outline of the text that we're reading in Ezekiel, the 38th chapter. All right. Pretty much outlining, you know, the land of Magog and showing you the biblical names to what we have today. Okay, showing you that Gog and the land of Magog is referring to Russia. Okay, as well as these other, uh, you know, countries like Togomar or Togarma going to Turkey. Okay, and Magog being those other, um, you know, branches that broke off from Russia, like Ukraine, uh, Belarus, all right, Slovakia, so on and so forth, man. Verse 3, it says, And say, Thus saith the Lord Power, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, which is, in a metaphoric uh, sense, giving back Russia its power. Okay? And I will bring thee forth in all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Verse 5, and this is the point. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Okay? And with the whole summit meeting that the BRICS nations have uh, had in August 22nd uh, through the 24th. Alright? More and more countries are being put in cahoots with Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, man. Okay, real quick. Um, let me just pull up and that. Began pouring them in BRICS Summit 2023. The dollar is going to die. We've All right, listen good. We have decided to invite the Argentine Republic, the Arab Republic of Egypt, the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, the Islamic Republic of Iran, the Kingdom of Saudi... Right, and when you go into the, um, you know, just put, where is Persia today? It's Iran, okay? So that fits beautifully with what we just read in Ezekiel 38 and 5, man. This prophecy is playing out as we speak. And going back to the point that there is no other God speaking about this, but Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. All right. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is the only God. 
And he's making himself known loud and clear as we speak. He's been doing that, okay? But as we continue to see these prophecies playing out before our two eyes, it shows the omnipotency of the Heavenly Father. And it shows that all these other gods ain't nothing, man, okay? But a bunch of idols, just like it tells you in the um, in the Psalms, man. Real quick, let me grab. Oh, I forget what scripture that is, Salakia. Let me just put, made the heavens. Yep, this is Psalms uh, 96 and 5. It says, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord Yahweh made the heavens. Okay, so that puts it, you know, to a T of... The power, all right, that the Heavenly Father has, man. Okay, and then um, I want to grab another one. Psalms 15. And let me see here. Psalms 115. And you can start really at the top, but just for the sake of edification, I want to jump to the point and... Go to seven. It says they have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. Okay? Meaning that you're you're pretty much pursuing to a second edge of the ninth chapter, man. Okay? You're born in vain. But at the end of the day, you're fulfilling prophecy of being one of those spirits that was drinking. All right? Living it up just like in the days of Noah. Okay, so let's go back to um this video again, but this shows you, man, okay, the Bible is alive, and just like it tells you in um, Habakkuk 2 and 3, all right, though it tarry, wait for it, because right now we're not, we're, let me, let me grab it real quick, Salak Yakim, forget uh, how it goes word for word, this is Habakkuk 2 and 3, it says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. And this is the time that we're living in, man. Where these prophecies are popping off the pages. And that are coming to life. And that are no more tearing. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Okay? And the ones that are bringing this to pass. And that are making a plane upon the tables. Are the prophets of the Heavenly Father. Okay? <clears throat> They've been doing this for decades, man. Once again, going back to the to the time when the apostles were in the youth of their age, okay? They were speaking about these things, all right? So by now, as we see them coming to pass, it's obvious that Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is the only power, okay? The Arabia and the United Arab Emirates to become full members of BRICS, the membership will take effect from the 1st of January 2024. It's official. The All right. And what he just said, by that being official on January the 1st of the next year, 2024, a lot of things are going to pop, man. Okay. There's many articles showing that when, you know, this membership of these other nations finally get in cahoots with BRICS, they're going to install their new world order, okay? And that is of not dealing with the U.S. dollar anymore, man, okay? So what's that going to entail? Hyperinflation over here in the country of America. And guess what? The only ancient text that speaks about hyperinflation is the Bible, man, okay? So once again, this shows you what we're reading in Isaiah, the uh, 45th chapter. The only God that is showing what the future holds and what's going to happen is the Bible. All right. So going back to Isaiah 41 and 23, it says, show the things that are to come hereafter that we may know that you are gods. Yea, do good or do evil that we may be dismayed and behold it together. Verse 24, behold, you are of nothing and your work of naught. An abomination is he that chooseth you. Okay? And that's pretty much the point that I wanted there. So from there, um, 
we're going to jump to the 44th chapter in the book of Isaiah and start at the 6th verse. It says, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And who as I shall call and shall declare it, and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming, and shall come, let them show unto them. Okay? And once again, the only God that is speaking right now is Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. And in a beautiful, a beautiful um, account in our history is Elijah, okay? Where he was faced with the uh, 450 prophets of Baal. Matter of fact, uh, real quick, let me get that. This is um, 1 Kings 18 and... Um, so lucky. Let me get to the point. This is 1 Kings 18 and matter of fact, let me start at 21. So lucky. It says, And Elisha came unto all the people and said, How long haught ye between two opinions? If the Lord be the heavenly Father, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. And this is the estate and the condition of the nation of Israel right now, man. Okay? We've been tossed to and fro and have been going from doctrine to doctrine to the point where our people don't know what they believe in, man. Okay? And that day of reckoning, the day where you got to choose whether you believe in the Heavenly Father, all right, or you believe in the power of Egypt is coming. Okay? And doing shows like this gives the understanding and the persuasion to follow Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, because He is the only God speaking. Verse 22. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of Yahweh. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of Yahweh and the power that an that answereth by fire, let him be the power. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. So uh, Elijah pretty much put the God Baal to the test. All right. To see whether he's going to answer or whether Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is going to answer. Okay. Let's read on. Verse. Um. 26. It says, and they took the bullock. Talking about the prophets of Baal, which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning even unto noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered, and they leaped upon the altars which was made. And this is going to be the condition of our people in the time of Jacob's trouble, man. Okay? When all hell is breaking loose, they're going to be calling upon their false gods, but guess what? No answer is going to be given unto them, and no comfort. Is going to be given. Alright. To the point where they're going to go crazy. Just like the prophets of Baal. Alright. And guess what we're going to be doing. The exact same thing that Elijah was doing. By mocking at you people man. Okay. Verse 27. And it came to pass. A matter of fact. Let me read it in the NLT. Just to put it in a, in a better perspective. About noontime. Elijah began mocking them. <laughs> you will have to shout louder. He scoffed. For surely he is a god. Perhaps he is daydreaming or is or is revealing himself or maybe he is away on a trip or is asleep and needs to be wakened. OK. And this is the estate of these gods, man. OK. They're nothing. Verse 28. So they shouted louder and following their normal custom, they cut themselves with knives and swords until the blood gushed out. They raved all afternoon until the time of the evening sacrifice, but still there was no sound, no reply, no response. All right. And that's going to be the condition of our people during the time of Jacob's trouble, man. No answer. So that's pretty much all I wanted. I just wanted to, you know, push the point that these other gods ain't nothing, man. 
Okay? The only God that is speaking loud and clear via his prophets is Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. All right? So it behooves, you know, whoever may be watching that is, you know, that is ignorant of the fact of who Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is, get right with him. Okay? Because there's coming a time where all these prophecies, all right, and the edification that is coming out is going to be closed, man. Okay? The gates of mercy are slowly but surely closing. All right? So it behooves you to get right. But at the end of the day, it's all in the will of the Heavenly Father. Okay? So with that, giving all praise to our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakudash, Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of a great millstone that have taught us this word in the Ruel. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect scattered abroad the four winds of the earth that are in the hopes of receiving mercy from our power. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And until next time, Shalom Akim, Shalom